All right, so I don't think I have seen so much shift in a promotion in the past three years as quickly as it happened in these two nights. We have a whole bunch of things that happen, and we will get talking about those. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, to That's Wrestling. Today we are covering the New Japan Cup Finals as well as Dominion. And wow, a whole bunch of things happen. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Check out the podcast on all your favorite podcast apps. Mailbag questions, you can send them to eric at thatswrestling.com. And with me tonight, I have Josh Luna. How's it going? It's going great. Going great. Still a little bit shaken up from the past two nights, but still a little great. But still great. Yeah. Yeah, I I managed to crawl out of bed uh, earlier than I normally do on the weekend to watch these shows and get my notes taken and try not to get stuff spoiled for me, though somebody nicely dropped something in the Discord that spoiled the ending of Dominion for me. <laughs> right when I right oh, I rolled man. over, opened my phone, and there's the spoiler right there for the last match uh, on Dominion. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that happened to me, too. Never check, never check social media after after watching a New Japan show. Yeah, that's it a, wasn't. It was beautiful. just in my alerts. Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, before we start, uh, we have some good news with Yoshihashi injuring his leg during the New Japan Cup shows. It seems like he is going to be okay because they have him scheduled to appear on the July twentieth show, and. Some people were saying this was a career ending injury, but uh, it seems that it might not be. And he just needed a little bit of rest or who knows how much we will see him actually do during these upcoming shows. Maybe he'll just be a body sitting on the outside the whole time and not taking any bumps and not risking it or um, I, I, or he's perfectly fine and he'll uh, be back to normal or it's just a bruise or something like that. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not sure either, but we'll, we'll have to see when July 20 comes around. All right. So let's get into it. The new Japan cup finals. We of course opened with a whole bunch of multi-man matches, Really not a ton coming out of these. We had to start uh, Hanma and Makabe versus Uemura and Suji. So we had a, a, a young lion tag team against the two vets. Anything on this one? Um, It was just the standard young lion match, in my opinion. The young lions look great. Seems like Makabe's like, uh, moving into that role of the aggressive uh, mentor of sorts and just trying to toughen these young lines up, I guess that yep. that's all I really got have for it. Yeah. And then we had Kojima and Tenzan versus Gabriel kid and Hiroki Goto. Uh, again, nothing much here, but, but I'd like to point out that Gabriel kid is showing the most potential out of all the young lines in Japan right now, but that doesn't surprise me since like he's been, since he has experience being booked in like, uh, in like the bigger, British scene, so yeah, seems like he's just the guy. He's a guy that has good fundamentals, and the LA Dojo and New Japan is just expanding on it to make him even greater. Yeah, I I see the same. I think he's got uh, a lot of potential of the current young lions that I've been seeing. Uh, then we had a singles match. It is the debuting of Master Wado versus Doki. And Doki right out of the gate attacks or attempts to attack with the pipe before the bell, but Wado hits him with a bunch of strikes instead. Uh, eventually they fight onto the outside a little bit and Doki grabs the pipe that he had. Uh, the ref tries to take it away. Doki throws the ref to the ground. Not sure how that's not a DQ and then hits Wado with it and chokes him with it. Uh, Doki gets uh, most of the match, probably probably took about 75% of the match, but Wado actually ends up picking up the win in the end. He's using a corkscrew senton for his finisher, it looks like, and then immediately after the match, Kenamaro runs out and attacks Wado, and then Tenzan runs out for the save. All right, so my thoughts on this match. I think... 
Doki looked fine, I guess, for the, for the role he played in the match. Uh, I like Master Wado's ring work. Uh, the mix of the martial arts moveset plus the high-flying lucha that he learned from Mexico, it works for me. Like, if I'm gonna have someone be the next junior ace, then, then this style would be ideal for me. Um, I also... I like... I like uh, the move to send him to the New Japan, uh, like the like the Hontai, since they needed a full time junior star since Kushida left for Florida, and uh, but I don't know why Tenzan just showed up. Like it's really weird. I'm pretty sure Tiger Mask would have been the one to go out there if he didn't get sick before New Japan restarted. Right. But yeah, it's kind of kind of weird to have Tenzan go out there. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like Tenzon's kind of going to play the mentor role, I bet uh, it looks like, or something like that. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> yeah, it's a little strange. I'm pretty sure that was meant for Tiger Mask, but... Yep. Uh, then we had Yujiro Takahashi and Taiji Ishimori against Bushi and Sonata. I didn't really take anything out of this match. It was yeah. just there, kind of. <laughs> Yeah, I I feel the same. It was just the normal New Japan tag. I was I was a little taken back to see uh Yujiro pick up the victory, but it actually makes a lot sense a lot more sense uh once we see once we see later down the next two nights. Yeah. Well, yeah, the next night definitely. Um all right, so then we had Hiroshi Ta- uh, Tanahashi uh Taguchi Koto Ibushi, Nagata versus Zack Sabre Jr., Tai Chi, Kenamaru, and El Desperado. So, really, this is a setup going into the match at Dominion for the tag titles between Tanahashi, Koto Ibushi versus Zack Sabre Jr., and Tai Chi. Uh, attacking the knees was kind of the main focus. Uh, t- attacking Tanahashi's knees during this match was kind of the main focus. Uh, in the end, Desperado gets the pin using Pinche Loco on Taguchi. Yeah, um, again, it. I just saw this as another match that just built towards the tag titles. Um, Desperado looked great. Seems like, like it's going to make a lot more sense to why he's taking all these victories for the, in the Suzuki Gun uh, tags. Yep. But yeah. Uh and after the match there was a short brawl between Tanahashi and Ibushi against Tai Chi and Zack Saber Jr. with the tag champs actually standing tall uh on the end of this. Yep. Uh next up we had Hiromu Takahashi, Shingo Takagi, and Tetsuya Naito versus Tomohiro Ishii, Sho, and Toriyano. Um Basically, this is a preview of Show versus Shingo, which is happening the next night at Dominion, uh, as well as Hiromu and Ishii continuing what they kind of started during the New Japan Cup. They seem to be going down each other's throats a few times here. Mm-hmm, yeah, uh, definitely. I definitely agree with that. Um, I, I'd also like to point out that there was a fun little finish to this match with uh, Hiromu grabbing Yano's hair to free up Naito and Shingo. To let them go for a sequence that allowed uh, Naito to land the, the jackknife cover and take the victory. Just thought that that was a fun finish. Uh, yeah, it wasn't It wasn't like a, uh, a decisive end in that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we had the finals of the New Japan Cup, and this is where a whole bunch of stuff goes down. So we have Evil versus Kazuchika Okada. Evil hits Darkness Falls right out of the gate for a two count, and then Okada uh, manages to escape out of everything as evil. Deep into the match, we have Evil sending Okada into the ref, who gets knocked down to the outside. Evil gives Okada a low blow and then makes a pile of chairs in the ring and hits Darkness Falls on the pile of chairs. He hides the evidence before the ref gets back into the ring, but he still only gets a two count out of that. Okada Mm. manages to later hit a cradle neck breaker, and then uh, then they have a bit of a striking exchange on their knees. We have Okada hitting a dropkick, putting the Cobra Clutch on. Evil will not give up, so Okada 
lets it go. He hits a couple of pull-in lariats and reapplies the Cobra Clutch. And this is when Gato runs down to distract the ref. So my brain is like, what is going on here? We have one of the guys from Bullet Club coming down to help Evil. And then we have Yujiro. He gets in the ring behind the ref's back and attacks Okada. So I'm thinking, like, is Bullet Club just making a really, really late play on attacking Okada for some reason? And then Evil and Okada end up slowing up here. So the match continues after all this. Evil hits a huge clothesline for a two count, and the ref gets bumped once again. Evil hits a couple of low blows, then hits everything is evil, and Evil wins the match with the help of members from Bullet Club. So after the match here, Naito comes out because, of course, he is going to be facing Evil at Dominion the next night, and Naito puts puts his fist up to do a fist bump, and Evil puts his hand up, and right before they touch, he turns his fist into a two sweet and he attacks Naito and then members of the Bullet Club all come out and Evil has joined the Bullet Club. Okay, I'm going to start with the match here. Uh, it was a standard Evil match. It was, it was good technically. Um, evil with the heelish tactics, of course, played a factor in how this match was uh, in how this match went. Okada still looked credible because Evil did not beat Okada clean. But moving to the post-match, Evil joining Bullet Club surprised me and many fans. It was a good call for now since Bullet Club can't get a big chunk of their guys to Japan and they right. need like a standard heavyweight or like a standard heavyweight to like get in there and uh and be that top heel mm-hmm. while like Jay White and Kenta can't go in there and fill that role. Um, but once they do come back, it might be a little weak. It might be concerning for e- on how evil's run will go. Yeah. Uh, since those guys are going to be back to take their old spot. And uh, in the long run, I have to add, there's a question that pops into my mind that will joining the bullet club, make evil go stale. But I wrote this. I wrote this right after the match, so I have a cl- more of a clear answer. But I'll I'll drop more of that when we get to Dominion. And another and another uh, question that that comes into my mind is: Will Sonata still break out of Lij as previously teased? Right. Yeah. That's. Yeah. I don't know. Now is that going to pull Lij back into being a tight knit group? Because now they seem to have a common enemy in Bullet Club more so than they used to, and very much so with Evil. Um, And then, of course, like you said, we are missing a ton of Bullet Club members that can't compete. We're missing Jay White, Bad Luck Fale. We're missing the Gorillas of Destiny. We're missing Kenta. So we're missing five major players in that faction, which is almost the entire faction. Um so yeah, basically. Uh, as far as this match, I think this match went way too long. Um, yeah, like I, I agree. And then two major segments of ref bump downtime seemed excessive. All right. Like they okay. might have been able to do this with just the they could have done all of the Bullet Club stuff at the end instead of having like the bullet club runs out after the ref gets knocked down when the ref comes back in then they gets knocked down again later um it seemed redundant yeah i i i see your point there but yeah that that's that's i gotta say (laughs) uh all right so we move on to dominion which beforehand we knew it was going to be show versus shingo takagi for the never open way hit championship we had Zack saber jr tai chi versus hiroshi tanahashi and kota ibushi for the tag titles and then of course evil 
has turned on LIJ and is going to be facing Tetsuya Naito here. Uh, of course, we start off the night with a bunch of multi-man tags. Again, we have Gabriel Kidd with Hanma and Makabe versus Taguchi, Nagata, and uh, Kojima. Again, Gabriel Kidd looked really good. He got a lot of stuff in. Um, really just your typical young lion match, I would see. Uh, yeah, I have nothing else to say. Uh, <laughs> you also said that Gabriel Kidd looked great, and... And I love my and I love my boy Gabe Kid. <laughs> uh, then we had uh, Suji Yano and Ishii um, versus Bushi, Hiromu Takahashi, and Sonata. Um, like not a ton came out of this. I don't think really we saw Hiromu going after Ishii some more, uh, just keeping that fire lit and. All in all, not too much else came out of that. Yeah, it was a solid tag. Um, uh, Lij looked a bit more down, which made sense storyline wise. Hiromu wasn't his same explosive, uh, cheerful self. He he had more of the like the serious demeanor. And yeah, and he had like um, he had like why written all over his um his yeah. his uh tape. On his wrist. Yeah, doshte, doshte. Yeah. That means that means why. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and Hiromu picking up the win here will actually mean a lot more down the line. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and he actually picked it up with the uh, with the with the crab uh, against Suji. So yeah. a little <laughs> bit of a uh, spit in the face to the to the young lion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but who? But Hiromu was in a bad mood. Yeah, storyline wise. So exactly. Yeah. Uh, next up, we had Yurimura, Wado, and Tenzon versus Doki El Desperado and Kanemaru. So this, we are continuing on seeing some more of Wado. What did you think about this one? Um, honestly, this this was just Wado versus Kanemaru build, in my opinion. Um, Desperado picking up the win will obviously set him up for later. And, uh, yeah, uh, Wado looked a lot more comfortable in, uh, in this multi-man than he did, uh, against Doki, which is expected out of, which is expected, uh, once Young Lions come out of, uh, come out of excursion. Just cause, just cause, like, there's, like, that period that can go up to a year of Young Lions looking a bit uncomfortable uh, not really used to the New Japan stage, so yeah, that's and I think Wado's in that right now. Yeah. Um, and then we had Hiroki Goto and Kazuchika Okada versus Taiji Ishimori and Yuro uh, Yujiro Takahashi, and this goes back to what we were talking about with seeing Takahashi kind of coming up and getting some wins. Here we have. Takahashi picking up the win over Goto. Yeah, um, this match just built Okada versus uh, Yujiro. That's going to be happening at at uh, Sengoku Lord. Yep. Um, and uh, and the thing I noticed in this match is that Goto got busted open by I think by like a thrust kick that was thrown by Yujiro. If I don't know if you noticed that or not, because like his mouth was like bleeding. I After, did like, not. I was watching just on my phone, so I was I was kind of kind of not paying direct attention to this one. Um, but yeah, I, this is kind of a little strange, just given the history that Okada and Yujiro Takahashi are going to be facing one another one on one. Um, but I mean, at this point, they have such a limited roster. With yeah. not having anybody who was not already living in Japan, and even people who were living in Japan went back to their home countries uh, before lockdowns happened, and now they can't, right, right. They can't come back. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I yeah, guess it also- makes sense when you really have no other no other direction to go. Yeah, for sure. And they didn't use this match during the uh, during the New Japan Cup. Hmm. Hmm. All right, then we finally get into our championship matches here. We have Sho versus Shingo Takagi for the Never Open Weight Championship. They start off the match going a million miles an hour. 
I was like, hmm, this might not last very long, or these guys are just going to gas out quick. Uh, but they uh, play, they basically play throughout the match that they hate each other, though they both play very cocky against each other. A lot of one-upsmanship type of type of uh, gestures at one another. Sho targets the arm of uh, Shingo, and Shingo takes a more holistic approach and trying to wear down the entire body here. We have lots of striking exchanges. We have uh, Shingo hitting the Noshigurami and uh, getting a two count there. Sho hits the uh, a backstabber, a power bomb, and then a power breaker, and then a massive clothesline. He only gets a one count here, uh, but Sh- uh, Sho hits a great German deadlift suplex. He had a lot of snap on that suplex through the entire range of motion from from Shingo being held, you know, underneath him between his legs, and then all the way through to the uh, to the landing on the other side. Very impressive. Sho is very strong for his size, and then during a striking exchange. They are like so blind rage here that show actually pushed the ref down when the ref wants them to separate because they're against the ropes. And um, then we have Shingo hitting the made in Japan as show kicks out. Uh, he hits a pumping bomber, but barely even gets a one count on show. And then show puts on a rear naked choke and Shingo falls back and show transitions to an arm bar but shingo powers that up and uh tries to hit a a a power bomb but show gets out of that and manages to hit the straight jacket pile driver the shingo takagi gets out of a shock arrow attempt uh but ends up in a arm bar once again then into a triangle choke and shingo powers out of that hits a death valley driver and then hits a reverse draping gtr then hits last of the dragon to pick up the win and retain the never open weight championship. Yeah, this, this was another high speed, uh, high, uh, stiff affair in my opinion, just another, another match, uh, that highlights their heated rivalry. Uh, these two have amazing chemistry, which makes them not, which basically makes them prone to having a bad match. I I really (laughs) like, I, I really like it just because like both of their styles really mesh together, and uh, and yeah, Takagi defending is unsurprising here just because Sho isn't at that level of uh, being able to take the title yet, and Shingo definitely deserves a bit of a longer run. Yeah, and now with Yo being out, and I'm sure they're just gonna have to vacate the tag titles because. Show and Yo are the uh, junior tag champions right now, so uh, yeah, it's gonna be sure. it's gonna be so long that they're gonna have to vacate those unless Show can pick up a partner. But I don't see that happening. It would make way more sense to sh- for Show to take this time to go out on his own, and we might see a big single star in the uh, junior and never open weight kind of kind of class. Uh, coming up right here yeah it would definitely be the right move for show especially if new japan wants to prioritize him being the next junior being up there for being the next junior ace if it isn't going to be master wado yeah um and then right after the match uh when shingo is posing at the entrance just about to leave he gets attacked from behind by el desperado who snags the uh never open weight championship title belt and walks off with it yeah, so now we're seeing uh, what Desperado's been teasing in his promos and at the payoff for him getting all those uh, multi-man tag victories. Desperado challenging for the Never Belt makes perfect sense if uh, if you've been noticing the, ca- the victories that he has been taking. Like, he was able to take Ishii to his limit. He was able to, uh, pin-, he was able to pin bigger young lines like Gabriel Kidd and Yoda Suji. And... Yeah, it makes sense for Desperado to challenge, and it's refreshing to see uh, juniors actually step up in the Never Division now that the heavyweights that you would usually challenge are not readily available at the moment. Yeah, and... Oh, crap. I forgot what I was going to say. 
<laughs> Happy I Senate totally festival. spaced what I was just about to say about the whole thing. Uh, oh, yeah. It, it was, we didn't say when it was actually. So this this title match is actually going to take place at uh, Shingoku as well. So Sengoku Lord Sen- at yeah, Nagoya. Sengoku Lord. Um, so that is coming up on the 25th. So that should be a good one to see. Uh, I thought that this match between Sho and Shingo Takagi was the match of the night. Yes, for sure. Like, this was definitely a match of the night. Probably by a good distance, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, I can say so. Yeah, so next up we had Zack Sabre Jr. and Tai Chi challenging... Uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi for uh, and Kota Ibushi for the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championship and they actually brawl before the bell uh, Kota Ibushi uh, went for a crossbody over the top rope and he just splatted on the ground like Tai Chi did, even, did a very very bad catch job I don't know if you saw that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah he just like went chest first right into the right into the mats on the floor uh tai chi does a lot of cheating throughout this match and he uh takes a piece of cord i think it was a tag rope from one of the corners that he stole he and he's choking tanahashi with it he he chokes him with some camera cables uh the ref is very slow to figure out what's going on a lot of the time we have a very long sequence of zack saber jr and tanahashi doing a bunch of chain wrestling and submission wrestling and then we're treated to tai chi and kota ibushi kicking the crap out of each other um and that's not metaphorically like literal kicks (laughs) <laughs> huge kicking exchange we have a zack saber jr uh runs in when he's not the legal man at one point and puts a submission on kota ibushi and the ref just throws up his hands like he has he can't do anything or something so i'm sitting here like um the illegal man has a submission on the legal man in the middle of the ring and you're the ref why don't you start counting for him to let go of it or you'll disqualify him that really made completely no sense and we have more of this nonsense later and eventually everybody gets kind of their spots in and then we have everybody is down and Zack Sabre Jr. distracts the ref and Tai Chi grabs the iron glove he hits Kota Ibushi with it which takes Kota Ibushi out for the rest of the match and he misses Tanahashi and then Tai Chi and Zack Sabre Jr. double team Tanahashi in the middle of the ring in front of the ref for a literal three minutes. The ref does absolutely nothing. Zack Sabre Jr. gets Tanahashi up for the Zack uh, Zack driver. Tai Chi kicks him in the back of the head and then Zack Sabre Jr. delivers the Zack driver and gets the pin. So we have new IWGP tag team heavyweight champions. I hated this match. Um, <laughs> actually, actually, Eric, I, I kind of like this match. If you compare it to like, uh, if you think about it, uh, if you watch like IWGP tag matches from like 2016 to 2017 and you get it now, the work rate, the work is like much better. The, the in-ring is much better because like, because yeah, um, I thought it was pretty good. Like the exchanges were good. Like I I can understand if like if ring if like the logic of the match was big that you can that you would like not be a big fan of it, but I'm more of a work rate guy, so I really on a work rate standpoint, I thought that both teams looked really good with uh and uh they were yeah, it was it was just it looked really good. The dangerous techers, they looked smart by targeting the weaker man and being like a solid heel tag team that new japan needed especially when the especially when god is out they look smart by targeting tana's knees and yeah they look and yeah they and because of that they got the victory yeah i i i the biggest problem here is the refing for me that it completely blew out the the ability to spe- suspend disbelief or even take it as a serious match and 
if if there are no consequences to cheating, then why is it even cheating? It's not cheating. If the ref doesn't care, then it's not cheating, right? Either that or Marty is, or or maybe uh or maybe Gato just loves to rib Marty Asami all the time by making him look like the stupid ref. Well, this was actually Red Shoes in this match. Oh, it's Red Shoes. Yeah. Oh, then seems like Gato like loves to rib Reb- Red Shoes. Yeah, Red Shoes is like the most impotent ref I've ever seen. <laughs> Cuz yeah. yeah, it's just like, okay, you have plenty of tools, you can count, but they were I I went back and it was 3 minutes actually three minutes and he just sat there and watched the whole thing throwing his hands up in the air like okay start counting you idiot to get the guy out of the ring Um, yeah yeah but but again the only time red shoes really like really sticks to the rules is when he's against the bullet club so let let let's that's that's just my observation yeah but it really like as far as storytelling goes if there are no consequences for cheating then there's no such thing as cheating and it doesn't really matter anymore so it just really takes me out of it uh so i wish they would clean some of that stuff up it was really bad throughout the uh the cup too there we had so many ref bumps and so many like instance of outside interference and cheating it it seems to it like gets watered down when you see it every single match yeah yeah for sure i i can i can see your point all right uh and then we go into evil versus tetsuya naito for the iwgp heavyweight and intercontinental championships evil has new ring gear new entrance music no eye makeup no scythe no mask and for some reason he's wearing a tutu <laughs> uh not, not a good look yeah. for him i don't think uh yeah i should probably lose that <laughs> uh, can- yeah, can I can I get, can I just say something? Sure. Evil is so evil that he that he stri- that he straight up took Awesome Kong's ring gear yeah. from her closet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This is is totally Awesome Kong's ring gear. Um and, and I like uh, I do like on the back that he used to have the upside down cross and now it's uh, like a, a a rifle. So Yeah. For the Bullet Club. When, yeah, with bullets, with like bullet marks and uh, evil written all over it. Uh, so we have a bunch of Bullet cl- Club guys come out to ringside with evil, but uh, they all get tossed out before the match starts. Uh, once the match does start, we have a bunch of back and forth. Um, and then we have evil setting up a table on the outside by the ring. And he grabs the uh, little toy scythe from the announcer. I don't know the announcer's name. Milano. Milano Collection ET. Yeah, he's the one who basically goes into a trance every time evil came out. So this... um, So he grabs the the little toy scythe and he actually snaps it. And then um, the announcer jumps the barricade and... Uh, tries to attack Evil, but it does not go very far. Evil takes him down, throws him into the barricade. So uh, this is uh, going to be a bit of a change now that his uh, disciple no longer has somebody to be a disciple of. And we have Evil removing a turnbuckle pad here, but it doesn't come into play for quite some time. They really slow things down for a while. We have uh, Evil starting to target Naito's knee a bit. They fight on the apron by the table that had been set up, and Evil drops Naito knee first through the table, and we have Red Shoes protecting Naito from Evil, who is going to try to use a chair on Naito's knee, so (laughs) Red Shoes actually grabs a piece of the table and is, like, wielding it like a a weapon to get Evil to... uh, back off and then back into the ring we have evil putting on the scorpio death lock for a very long time before naito can get to the ropes and then evil whips naito into the exposed turnbuckle hits darkness falls for a two count and then naito hits a desperation standing reverse blockbuster I guess that's the best i could describe it it was sort of like a reverse destino but not really 
Um, mm. <laughs> they uh, yeah. they jockey for position for a little while, and Naito hits a top rope Rana, and then a Destino, but only gets a two count. And then Evil blocks a second Destino attempt. And then we have Evil sending Naito into the ref, and he crushes him in the corner of the uh, exposed turnbuckle. So then we have Tai Chi and uh, Jado coming down to the ring. Jado takes about 10 years to get there. He's like halfway down the ramp before <laughs> Ishimori even comes out of the curtain. Ishimori makes it to the ring, hits the uh, West Post, uh, West Coast pop, and then uh, Hiromu runs out to take out uh, Jado and Ishimori. They're all fighting to the back, and Jado's moving as fast as he did out to the ring to the back while he's getting beat on. We have Evil then hits Naito over the head with a chair, um, and the seat popped right out. So this was a gimmick chair. So don't worry, people. He's, it wasn't a wasn't a serious headshot. Uh, Naito mounts a bit of an offense here, and he gets in a head kick, hits a reverse swinging DDT for a two, and then he hits a massive vertical brain buster. Goes for Destino, but Evil grabs the ref. And um, while the ref is distracted with that, uh, Naito gets hit with a low blow. And then we have Bushi running down, or at least that's what they said on commentary. Anybody who actually saw this guy knew this is not Bushi. He came out in a Bushi mask and an LIJ uh, jersey. But um, like uh, that is not Bushi at all. The build was completely wrong. This guy was uh, much bigger than Bushi is, and he jumps up onto the onto the apron and is like clapping, trying to encourage Naito to get up. But as soon as he's done, he starts punching him. He chokes him with a groat, and um, yes, a literal groat. He had like a, a a piece of wire with handles on each end. He's choking him with it. And this is all while the ref is down still. Uh, once he lets go, Evil stomps Naito in the balls and then hits everything as Evil. And we have a new IWGP heavyweight and intercontinental champion in Evil. This is the craziest 48 hours that I have seen in New Japan in the past three, four years. <laughs> Yes, definitely. This has definitely been like the craziest, uh, the craziest two nights of New Japan Pro Wrestling that I've been through. Um, but yeah, um, uh, about this match on a work rate standpoint, this match, this match did not do it for me. It did not do uh, it for me either. It was yeah. way too long. This was 38 minutes. For sure, like I'm kind of, I'm starting to get sick of these evil forty minute, forty minute, just you know, slow, slow grinds of matches. Um, it wasn't the way that I wanted to see Naito's title rend end, but but it was for a greater cause. Um, hopefully, I wanted, to, <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wanted to see a more aggressive evil, like just. An overall like change in like uh ring in ring style. Yes. Like I wanted to see, I wanted to see like a more like aggressive, like hard hitting evil. Kinda like kinda like like how heel Kenta was af was when by the time Power Struggle got around. But uh yeah, I also noticed that Naito kinda had to carry the whole match just because like evil seemed to like evil didn't seem like too active uh in ring wise in my opinion uh but from a storyline standpoint evil winning is just it's just great uh evil was the first member to join lij uh and it it and it just made it sting a little more for lij fans like myself and uh yeah i also kind of found it weird that naito like was still like tranquilo af <laughs> that this whole time like naito should Naito, I definitely think Naito should have at least shown a, a lot more aggression, in my opinion, because of what Evil did. And, uh, yeah. The yeah, whole fake boot. I, I think this whole thing should have been cut down to a 20-minute brawl. 
instead because Naito is going to be pissed. So he's just going to want to tear evil apart. And it seems like he had no, no thought on the situation at all. Right. Right. Um, but again, going back to the match, the whole fake Bushi thing was smart as it shows that evil knows Naito so well that he can trick that he knows how to, how to trick Naito into, uh, into falling for his traps. Um, but I did think that revealing it to be Dick Togo at the end was a little strange. Y- yeah. One, I don't know who Dick Togo is, so <laughs> um, it was strange to me. But just seeing him come out, it's like, dude, this guy is built way bigger than Bushi is. There is no way anybody believes he's actually Bushi. Um, so yeah, he's revealed after the match to be Dick Togo. And then also after the match, Hiromu comes out once uh, Evil and Togo are beating down on Naito. Hiromu runs out and then he challenges Evil to a match for the heavyweight and intercontinental championship and also saying if you're scared you can just put one of them up but later in the post show in the back evil accepts the match for for both titles and that is also going to happen at sengoku yeah so um that should be interesting yeah it should be um while i'm not really excited about togo joining bullet club i'll give the veteran a chance um like from what I've heard, he's not bad at all, and we'll have to see. We'll have to see when it happens. I also loved how Hiromu was the one to challenge Evil first, and showing the anger and emotion that Naito did not express, because like, because Hiromu and Evil were in the same Young Lion class. They they were they're basically like brothers, and and uh, and Hiromu said it best in his promo. That the base basically the reason why he joined Lij was to fight alongside Naito and Evil. So, yeah, uh, this I definitely think that the math the main event of Sengoku Lord is going to be emotional. Yeah, and I don't think we touched on it, but oh, oh no, that was actually after this match. But yeah, Hiromu was yelling and screaming like somebody just ran over his cat. Um, with, with, with Naito being laid out like he is going crazy that his best friend has betrayed him basically yeah <laughs> yeah I've, I've seen the memes all over the reddit forum oh there's a meme yeah. I just said that like that's what <laughs> yeah. I have not they're, seen them <laughs> they're, they're pretty funny man the, 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 the Hiromu memes are they're pretty funny and yeah um, I'd also like to say, um, welcome to the Threeville era of New Japan Pro Wrestling. This is going to be very interesting. I, now, so we were even talking. Okay, so last time we did a show, we were talking about the possibilities of Lij, who might be going where, and we're. I think we were both thinking it was not going to be this soon. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I it was not going to be gonna this way. Burn this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I guess it makes sense. Like, if they are, since they are down so many people, I mean, I don't think they would be able to slow burn it that much. Um, right. Now, now, tw- now, you know, hindsight, we can, we can see what ended up happening. But yeah, I, I think ultimately a slow burn would have been better. Um, yeah. And, but I, I think we're just dealing with the, with the fallout of the situation we find ourselves in and they had to do something. Was Naito's aunt reign going to come to an end around this time anyways? Was that the original schedule? Uh, if they didn't take those four months off, would it feel a little more um filling because he probably would have had at least two more title defenses prior to this match um of course it it might not have been specifically dominion because dominion would normally take place in the beginning of june so it would have happened at dominion back in june where where naito actually gets turned on by evil if that was the original plan or not uh there's been a lot of talk that this was going to be the year of evil at the beginning of the year so it turns out that it 
looks like it's going to be. So where now that we have this full shakeup and kind of our guesses have been blown out of the uh, the picture, where do we go from here? Do we have evil holding on to the title till say Wrestle Kingdom? and possibly beyond do we have him losing it relatively early to set up a wrestle kingdom rematch with naito maybe where do you think we go honestly i don't even know anymore um it's just it's 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 all up in the air like the whole like the whole like four the whole format that I kind of built in my head regarding New Japan has just been thrown out the window. So honestly, anything can happen at this point. Uh, but but one thing I would like to see is uh, is to have the IC title and the heavyweight title be split again. And I'd like to see Evil uh, keep the IC title and have the heavyweight title go to someone, go back to Naito or someone or someone of that caliber. And then yeah, and then like have like the G1 winner like face Naito at the Tokyo Dome or some or again. But yeah, again, I I don't know. This is just like a rough idea that I have. But yeah, we only have to see what comes out of this. Yeah, I especially I mean the whole schedule is thrown off from normal cuz we would be starting the G1 pretty much like this week normally uh but because the olympics were supposed to take place in japan this year they pushed it to the fall so the g1 is going to be late september into mid-october this year so that just completely throws the schedule off and completely changes my thinking about the whole thing anyways but yes i think they should split the titles uh sooner rather than later and do we go back to Naito with the heavyweight title or do we get it split off and Evil, for whatever reason, doesn't want to allow him to have a match for the heavyweight and Naito takes the IC title back? Um, I, I always see the IC title more as um, Naito's title anyways. I associate the, the IC title more with Naito than the heavyweight title, um, which is probably why... He, Maybe he should get the the heavyweight title back. So yeah, I'm just like going back and forth on what I want to see here. Um, but yeah, and then we're going into the the the. Well, I guess what big shows are we gonna have? We're gonna have probably we have Sengoku, and then we're gonna have are we gonna have Power Struggle prior to? Um, uh, we're gonna the G1. We're gonna uh before the G1, we're gonna be having the Summer Struggle tour. And I assume that they might do like a little bit of a a little bit of like a best of the super juniors tournament in that in that period, mm -hmm. uh, just with like a with just with a way smaller uh, uh, round of guys. Yeah. But yeah, I. But yeah, because like I, I think a reason why I would sus I would speculate about this is because is because I don't think uh I don't think in either New Japan Road which is happening on the 20th or Sengoku Lord that Master Wado is going to be having his singles match against Kanemaru which would make me th think that they'd be saving this for like a best of the super juniors type situation. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now and yeah, Wado is in a 10 man tag um against Suzuki Goon. Uh, on the Sengoku um, uh, uh, show. So, yeah, he's not, not going to be having that match by then. So, yeah, that's probably going to happen near the end of summer. So we have the the summer struggle starting the 26th. 6th, so that's the day after Sengoku. And then that is going to run, it looks like, all the way through through currently scheduled to august 16th so i'm guessing are we gonna have a big show the following week either if that's gonna be called power struggle or if it's gonna be called summer struggle or something else because wrestle destiny was supposed to happen the following week at Madison square garden obviously that is not going to happen. so mm -hmm. that's just kind of where their schedule ends right now so i guess we will have to see because that would still put a solid month between the end of the summer summer struggle schedule and the beginning of the G1. So I'm guessing there's at least going to be one after Sengoku. We're going to have one more big show 
and then we're going into the G1 uh, at the end of September. Yeah, that definitely looks like what's going to happen. And I'm just checking like the capacity of uh of the show on the 16th, and it looks like it's gonna. And I think that it might be like a bit of a bigger show. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah. Yeah, I mean that's I don't know that venue it does I don't recognize it so. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have to see. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, you got anything else to talk about before we wrap it up here? Um, I don't. I don't really have anything else to talk about. Um, I'm just. I'm just. Uh, I'm just excited to see what happens. What comes out of New Japan Pro Wrestling, and especially with the changes that happen. And I'm gonna have. And I'm just gonna. It you know, experience New Japan and the rest of the Pura Rest world. So, yeah, that's all I got to say. Yeah, I'm going to reserve judgment on whether this is the right way to go or the wrong way to go till later. Usually, uh, Gato's booking works out in the end, and we will see if it works out in the end here. I would just hope that they tighten up a little bit. They went to the the ref bump and lots of interference well way too much on these shows coming back from the hiatus uh so i'd like to see a little bit more cleaned up in that area just to just to give it back more of a sports feel that i would expect out of new japan right uh all right so uh let people know where they can find you all right, so uh, as usual, I'm I'm also on another podcast, a variety podcast, the R7 podcast. Uh, it if again, like if for all the viewers out there that are looking for a podcast that isn't wrestling related and that talks about like that talks about like subjects around the world that that go from like really small and ridiculous to like real to larger, more groundbreaking topics, then what we definitely hope to be the the guys for you so yeah please uh check us out uh it's going to be in the description right eric yes it will be in the uh show notes of the podcast and the description of the video yeah uh you can you can check me out and and the rest of my friends out there so yeah um yeah um we appreciate your support <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to you can snag this as a podcast and all your favorite podcast apps. If you can't find it, shoot me an email, Eric at that's wrestling dot com. But I'm pretty sure I'm pretty much on every platform. Uh, I get feedback from statistics and it looks like you can download me off of at least 40 different platforms that I've seen. Also, if you are listening to this as a podcast, head over to the YouTube channel because I do uh segments throughout the week five to ten minute videos just covering new japan news and aew news and if anything kind of spans industry wide i cover those also we do this show live over there on youtube so be sure to hit that bell notification because that will let you know when i schedule a live stream aew dynamite shows are pretty much always thursday at 7 p.m eastern time but new japan since they have no set weekly schedule it moves around a lot so we did sunday last time we did friday the time before that and today is a tuesday so you got to just kind of hit that notification so it will let you know as soon as i schedule i try to schedule as far out ahead of time as possible so you can be alerted so thanks for tuning in my name is eric laroche for josh luna thanks for watching that's wrestling see you later guys